Heavy do that, that again. Kind of like loading it up. Um, right here, you know, making sure, okay, like everything's set. You know, you have your shutter cock, you take out your slide, and you're like, all right, like, this is it. And, and then, like, bam, like, there's your image. Milwaukee is a complex historical tapestry within concrete wastelands amidst Cream City brick rises our city of today. Business sprouts in the factories of yesteryear. Old haunts become new destinations. In this series, we speak to artists whose work was woven by this landscape and trace the thread back to this new Milwaukee. I am Giovanni Hernandez Caballero. I always see myself as a community artist first and then, you know, photojournalist or photographer, just kind of printmaker, but the essence is always community art. My work has always been kind of based around culture and identity, mostly because it's something that I've struggled with a lot. I was born and raised here in Milwaukee, uh, but my family's history is from Oaxaca, Mexico, and, you know, my parents, my grandparents, my great-grandparents are all indigenous people called Mixtecos. What does it mean to grow up here in Milwaukee, but also for your culture and heritage to date back to before the Aztecs? I grew up kind of more closer to the Cesar Chavez Drive street uh, around that neighborhood. Uh, but a lot of times I would come over here because we didn't, or we didn't have a car growing up. So yeah. my mom and I would walk everywhere yeah. uh, and we would just walk around the neighborhood, you know, and I got to know a lot of the people around this area. If it's, you know, going to the barber shop and meeting, you know, the guy who cuts my hair and then growing that relationship with him, seeing how even this neighborhood has changed within the last 10, 15 years since I was a kid and now being an adult and seeing that drastic change, you know, you see more development and also it being such a hub for art, uh, specifically, you know, Southside artists. My family's from a small little indigenous village in the mountains. Uh, there's barely any electricity, no running water. Everyone speaks their indigenous tongue uh, and they still hold strong their indigenous traditions that have been passed down from generations to generations. And even though they don't really see themselves as artists, uh, they do a lot of artwork. If it's, you know, my grandmother who still uses like a, a wooden loom to make blankets, uh, or if it's, you know, my uncle who weaves baskets, uh, and it ties me back to my cultural heritage. You know, I only travel maybe once or twice a year, if possible, to see my grandparents. And I know that while I'm there, those days are the most important days of the year for me because those are the only times I have with them. You know, one of my biggest fear is that when I come back the next year, there's no one there anymore. You know, I think about that all the time. And I think that's why I also really gravitated towards film because it, it has helped me kind of cope with that idea of taking the time and making those moments valuable. So when I create, you know, a photo and have this physical object of that moment, to me, it's it's much more valuable than something that exists in, in pixels. And, in, and when I go in the dark room and make that print of that moment, I know that that print will live forever. It's gonna live past me. I create this archive of my family, my village, and my community. But, you know, in my neighborhood, I would always be so like intrigued and amazed by like the murals that were all around the street, specifically on Cesar Chavez Drive. And, you know, being a little kid walking with my mom to the grocery store, they would just captivate my attention. And you know, I really fell in love with that type of art and style of like, you know, how can we capture our culture and tradition with a single image if it's a mural or, or, or a photo? mural I remember most is this one, especially before it drastically changed and they like 
took out so many bricks and like put in windows this was probably one of the first murals for me where i was like oh man like it just it, it reminded me so much of a a photo because it, of its ability to tell a story. Aztec calendar all the way at the end, leading up to like the United Farm Workers flag. And then you lead all the way towards, you know, a field worker. And then even like a bird's eye view of the neighborhood at the corner. I think it just tells like that complex history of, you know, the people who live around this area, the cultural origin of who we are. I grew up in this neighborhood. Obviously, it wasn't the best times of my life where, you know, I grew up in poverty. Uh, and I don't say that to gain like pity or sympathy, but because it has played such a crucial role in my development as a person, but also the development of the work I create, where now I'm in such a different position where, uh, you know, I have gain so many opportunities within my academic and professional career where now I can give back to my community. At the next light, turn right. Yeah, Two years there. of winter, rain, sunlight, everything. When I first thought about this project, I knew I wanted to be focused on like young community members here in the neighborhood. And for them to see a mural, a photo of themselves in you know a street that they walk on, I think was the game plan and the goal to show that beauty. You know, for me, it has always been you know creating work about my community, for my community, and for them to also take that chance with me and be like, okay, you know, he's a young artist, uh, he's just starting off. Let's give him those opportunities. You know, to think that I would have such a big piece already up in a neighborhood I grew up in. I mean, it's it feels surreal sometimes. When I go and photograph a community event, I take my time to really, really interact with those I photograph. You know, I, I don't go in there, you know, with the camera ready. You know, I'll walk around, talk to people because I know the importance of creating proper documentation, specifically of underrepresented communities here in Milwaukee. I, I think about it as kind of a responsibility as a photographer, as an artist, as a photojournalist. Well, one of the most important things that has happened so far has been photographing you know, a father and son at a community event. I keep in contact with those that I photograph and I sent him a quick text saying like, hey, like, just want to let you know, like this photo appeared in today's paper. Uh, and I remember the text he sent back was, you don't know how happy this is going to make my son. One of my most iconic prints was my butterfly image, my migration is beautiful, where it has become a symbol of hope for my for my community. And, you know, people will message me and say like, hey, like I saw this sticker, I saw this print, you know, in, in Madison or in Green Bay. And I'm like, oh, like it, it created a life of its own. So when I told my parents like, hey, like I want to continue my education and pursue a, a BFA in photography. I knew it was something that was going to be difficult because I would be navigating such a different world. I know I have to produce the best work because I have a lot to prove. And seeing my work, you know, at the Milwaukee Art Museum for the first time, I knew this was something I, I wanted to pursue. As an artist, you know, it's now pushing it and in continuing not only in scale, but of how I interact more with people around the neighborhood. For images to no longer exist inside of a confined gallery space, but to use the whole city as a gallery, much like how these murals have been used. Giving more access to those, uh, like to the people in my community to see the work that I've created about them. And of course, you know, just like any other artist, you know, you have that dream and aspiration of showing your work in some of the most, you know, prestigious art museums around the, around the world. And I know for me, something that it's always in the back of my mind is, you know, winning a Pulitzer Prize for photojournalism. You know, I always tell myself, like, I'm going to be able to do that and bring that back here to Milwaukee. Like, I feel like I, I would achieve such a major milestone for my family.